Six Gun Productions. New media, new rules. This is Hollywood Outlaws, Episode 1, for October 10th, 2018. Tis the season. Hello and welcome to the first episode of Hollywood Outlaws. My name is Dan. And I'm Fab. Yeah, and some of you will remember us, you may remember us from such podcasts as uh, Linux Outlaws, which we did a long time ago. Uh, we finished that about four years ago now, almost exactly. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. So people, yeah, we did that for like seven years, and that was that was really fun. Was it 370 episodes and a lot of them two think, hours long yes. or something? So that's yeah. a lot of audio. <laughs> um, that's <laughs> a lot of audio. So, um, yeah, we recently decided to, to start doing stuff again. Um, I was Get the bent back together. Yeah, get the band back together. I was um, out of commission for a while. I was quite ill, but I'm doing better at the moment, which is good. So um, that's cool. Meanwhile, Fab's been busy doing all kinds of stuff and also doing other podcasts as well. You did uh, Geek News Radio with Dave. Yep, still um, doing that. Any others that you've been doing? Um, well, s- some other stuff, but that that's that's the main one. Yeah. That's, that's, that's the important one. Yeah, I started doing Floss Weekly again because um, Randall kept asking me. He was really nice. He kept asking me to come back on, and at the time, it just coincided that I was feeling a bit better. So I was like, okay, I'll give it a go. And um, and I did, and that was quite fun. Um, but I only do the odd yeah, one. Yeah, that's, that's how we uh, got got the idea to do something, right? We uh, I was on Floss Weekly as well. Yeah, so a lot of people ask me. I was at Odd Camp recently, which some of you will know, but if you don't, it's it's an event. That's all you need to know. And um, I was at the uh, – look it up. And um, I was at that event, and a lot of people kept asking me to explain how we ended up doing the Linux Outlaws kind of revival slash takeover thing. And they thought that was like my idea or your idea or we'd actually gone and taken over – twit which is not what happened at all so it's not a secret basically randall didn't have anything for for a show one week and he asked me if i could do a show so i said well, i can do a show but what are we going to talk about and he said we could talk about linux outlaws so i said okay we could but um we need, really need to get fab for that as well and he said well i was going to ask you to get fab so i said great well, let's do that then and that's basically how it came together and, and i then, was like i always wanted to be on twit yes yeah and it worked out because <laughs> you always wanted to be on twit so luckily when i asked you there was no like indifference to like eh, maybe i can do it you were like yes yes i want to be on twit so um <laughs> so that worked out and um yeah and people uh, that was about um, two a month ago six weeks ago i don't know as we're recording this we should say as well we're recording this uh what is it now like the 10th or something of september yeah so it may be significantly all- later as you hear this yeah this will only go out in october so i think this will be a, a, a part mm. of this show that we might record episodes in advance just let people know, you know, we might record mm. two or three in a row and then put them out later. Yeah, and it's not live either, so we don't have to worry about when we record them as as much as long as, you know, people get them as and when they hit and the And there won't be any news, right? So. Well, no, because, well, Bosch news, how are we going to do that? Um, <laughs> yeah, we should explain uh, what we're doing. Um, so yeah. I, um, so when we were talking about doing the podcast, I was like, I, I was planning mm. to do um, a show on Babylon 5, uh, watching Babylon 5 again and then talking mm-hmm. about it. And you had just turned me on to a great podcast called Wrestle Me, which you yeah, had Yeah, I love that. Right? I love that so which much. Which is a great podcast. So check <laughs> it, that out. Um, it it's really two good. guys who watch WrestleManias. Yeah. Um, and they're basically kind of recapping it but i guess 
in a loose fashion, so they're not. They don't really talk about the wrestling. wrestling. It's more about like the drug situation in the back room <laughs> and the, who's who's been fighting with who and, in the shower. And how office not office not Hulk Kogan is this? Movie. Yeah, and how much cocaine he's taken and stuff, which is really interesting. Um, yeah, so uh, interestingly, with their show, um, one of the guys, Pete, has never watched wrestling before, so he watches them like you know, as as he watches them, it's all new to him. And the other dude. Mark is, is like an old wrestling fan, so he's got more information about it. And it works well. So this kind of works for this as well, although we've both seen so the, yeah, the TV so series Bosch on, on Amazon at the moment and on other, other things. Um, that's B-O-S-C-H. And also, I meant to say to people, and you know I'm going to make this joke more than once, that it's got nothing to do with drills or power tools. <laughs> the washing machine. Yeah, you know, so the German this week engineering on, company. This week we're going to be talking about the hammer action Bosch, um, <laughs> you know, whatever. <laughs> that's not going to happen. Um, I, I don't think it will uh yeah so we're talking about bosch which is um it's a tv series based on the books which i haven't read so we have that dynamic as well i haven't read any of the books you've read yes. some of them so i can we, you can we, ask i can ask you about the books or you can tell me about what's different we've or. both both seen it i can remember when we were doing links outlaw so years ago you um yeah so i think i was like you got me into sons of anarchy and um yeah i think we might have been talking about titus Valover. Um, or yeah, you you yeah, were yeah. recommending Bosch to me anyway, and mm. I was like, I I hadn't seen it, so I watched it earlier this year, fell mm. completely in love with it, <laughs> started reading the books. I'm on book seven now, I think. Oh, wow, okay. Um, so I'm 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 really deep into it, and I've I've seen all the current yeah uh, TV, and you've seen that too, I guess. They're really popular as well, the books, and uh, I think is his name Michael seven, Michael no. Connolly. What's the guy's name? Uh, yes. Yeah, that's, so he's the author, and, and he's re- basically made a career out of these books. He started in about 1990 well, or something. It's a really interesting story, which we might get to. Um, the, uh-huh. the whole the whole story about how he became an author is fascinating to me. Mm. Um, he is he's one of those authors who was a journalist, um, like Terry Pratchett. Um, yeah. So that's obviously being a journalist myself. It's fascinating to me. Didn't he start? Um, I haven't. I've looked at his history a little bit. I think he started quite late as as an author. Well, so basically, yeah. basically, he was in as far as I can understand, he was mm. in at um, university. Okay. And he was going to drop out and mm. become a novelist. Right. Um, okay. So his parents. So he says this, and I think it's a pre- preface. To some of the one of the books. Yeah. I think the first one maybe. Um, so his parents did something. This is genius, right? Mm. So his parents were like, um, yeah, but like, if you drop out and, and then you, your novelist career doesn't take off, right? They, they were thinking like, this is going to be a disaster, right? Yeah. Our kid's going to be out of the job. So they said, well, you, you want to write crime books, but you don't know nothing about crime. Yeah. So here's our idea. You drop out of university, mm-hmm. you become a newspaper reporter, and then you can take the crime beat yeah, and yeah. work with these guys Mm-hmm. And then you get some experience, and then you can, uh, you know, on on the weekends write your books. And if yeah. they take off, you be- can become a writer. And this is genius because if they if it hadn't taken off, he'd still have a job as a journalist. You know. Yeah, um, that's a good. So idea, apparently, actually. he then did uh, some like he actually followed like a, a homicide detective around for a week, mm-hmm. um, and so that's how he learned a lot of the stuff that's in the books. Cool. And now in the TV show, so I think that that was genius of of his. Yeah. Parents. So yeah, did you great. did you watch The Wire at all? Um, no. Okay. So David Simon, who wrote The Wire, which is fantastic, um, and I know it's. I feel so. It's it's. I'm going to sound like a hipster now, but I started watching The Wire about three seasons. <laughs> Before it was cool. No, I did actually. So about three seasons into it, when all the cool people, to be honest, the real hipsters, were already like, "Oh, The Wire is amazing." Like friends of mine were like, "You should watch The Wire," and I started watching it in season three, and I was like, "God, this is amazing!" So I, I, I watched it all up to season three, and then. I watched season four and five as they were on TV. But The Wire was, um, David Simon was a reporter. He was the crime reporter for the Baltimore Sun. And um, he, so it's a similar story. He um, he worked within the uh, homicide department for oh, years. I mean, years. And, and followed them for a very, very long time. And he picked up ideas, obviously, for how detectives work and how the whole criminal networks work and all that kind of stuff from that so it's a really good way of doing it i would guess if you want to be a crime writer you probably need to know about actual crime okay that means i have to uh change tracks uh and go on the crime beat so now you're waiting for a call that goes there's been a murder <laughs> fab there's <laughs> well, been a murder <laughs> get down I've here with do- your camera and your notebook <laughs> i've doing some i've been doing some cyber crime stuff and can actually. you bring some chalk because we've run out of yeah. chalk to do the outline <laughs> of the body <laughs> yeah you'll laugh but i i got actually on on ebay i saw this and i just bought this for like five bucks i have like a lapd badge oh ah, cool <laughs> 
That's pretty like cool. Like a rep- replica badge, says yeah. Detective. <laughs> so interestingly, I mean, your friend and mine, Bradley Kuhn, who's a free software you know, guru and uh, Avenger, free software Avenger, I'm going to call him. Um, he, um, he, he used to live it. He was from Baltimore. And Baltimore is quite a, a crime heavy city can i say that i don't know whatever you want to call it and there's a lot there was a lot of murders going on a lot of drug problems and he said to me because i told him once so i was like i really like the wire and it's written by this guy called david simon and he used to work for the baltimore sun and badly quickly stopped me and went i used to read his reports in the baltimore sun i knew (laughs) him as a journalist and i was like oh wow cool so yeah there's a link there as well so um yeah i suppose the the message here is if you want to be a crime writer which neither of us are so use our you know advice well i want to be yeah (laughs) Cool. I wouldn't complain. <laughs> yeah, well, I kind of want to be Jimi Hendrix, but, you know, don't take my advice on how to be Jimi Hendrix because that's – I haven't managed it yet, but, you know. Um, I was I always wanted to be a, a novelist, actually. But um, let's let's get back to the um, to, to the show here, yeah, right? So we're, we're back trying – point. Yeah, go on. We're – the plan is that we will watch Bosch. Um, mm-hmm. Currently, there is, what, four seasons of the TV fourth series? Fourth season, yeah. It's just um, – yeah, been on, I think. No, the fourth season's been on a while. There are four seasons. They're just – filming the fifth i think yeah. and um so 10 episodes each and we will go through each episode um and we'll do a podcast episode on every episode yeah and talk about it so it might be a good idea um there will be spoilers it might oh, be a good yeah. idea for yeah. you to watch the episode first so if if you have any interest in bosch which mm. you should when you're listening to this um stop this and uh watch, and watch, watch the first episode yeah. of uh, season one yeah and if you've read the book maybe back. and not, come back. Not, not seen the tv series I would still advise you go and watch the TV series because I'm going to be talking. Fab's read the books, but I haven't. So um, I, the I books are very them. different. Yeah, you have to watch the TV series. Yeah, and um, it's well worth doing. And another note that we've got in our notes here is to mention, we've kind of covered this already, but this is not going to be about Linux or tech or anything <laughs> no. like that or technology or science or any of those things, it, really. I mean, we might – I don't think we're going to veer into those. But um, if you come to this and you think, oh, great, I used to listen to Linux Outlaws and I want to hear what the latest distros are, Sorry, that's probably you yeah. need to go and listen to one of the other gr- many great Linux podcasts that are available. And and there are enough. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. A lot, lot now. Um, yeah. So so this is going to be like, we're going to talk about pop cult- pop culture and things, of course. But, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Not not yeah. tech so much, I guess. Um, yeah. So uh, mm-hmm. yeah, I think uh, we we covered it all except I wanted to go say on. so um, so I called. You know, I called this Hollywood Outlaws. So I came up with this name because I think Outlaws is kind of us too. Yeah. yeah. Um, and I also didn't want to give it like, if this show keeps going, I mean, we're aiming for like two episodes a month, roughly. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, so so Bosch will carry as a while. Mm-hmm. Um, but at some point we might do other shows when we're done with Bosch or cool. whatever. Yeah. Um, I just wanted to point that out that we might just switch tracks. Um, we might. I, 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 I thought just Hollywood obviously fits. fits <laughs> Bosch well because he's he's at he's in the Hollywood division right. Also, if uh, we called it Bosch Outlaws, people are tuning in going. I want to hear these outlaw guys with with, <laughs> yeah. dr- with drills that are going to talk about like outlaw <laughs> drilling and stuff um, <laughs> or whatever. Right, exactly. So I thought you know Hollywood just as a a metaphor for the entertainment industry. I mean, at some point we might even talk about the BBC show. So that yeah, yeah, don't take it that. And the other thing is, you you did have this in the notes, but currently I can obviously talk about in the UK. If you're listening in the UK and you think, oh, I want to watch this, but I don't know where to watch it. Um, if you've got an Amazon Prime account, then you'll have um, Amazon Video or Prime Video, as it's called over here, and it is all on there. Um, so you can watch it on there. Um, and but- in Germany, it's called Amazon Video. Uh, you also get it with your Prime account. It's cool. just called differently, at, and it's also on there. Uh, mm-hmm. And what I like is you can also watch it in English. Yeah, uh, which, uh, awesome. which I'm watching this in English, obviously. Uh, yeah, and we talked so. a bit about actors as well. So, rec- also, you've got a note in here: F- season five's being reco- being filmed at the recorded, being filmed at the moment, and uh, Ryan Hurst is going to be in it, who's um, obviously OP from um, Sons of Anarchy. Sons of Anarchy, yeah, yeah, and he's brilliant. And he's gonna play a guy called Hector Bonner. And yeah. I'm wondering here. So, there's a Bosch novel called A Concrete Blonde, mm. um, which actually the first season. Um, that we're going to talk about takes takes mm-hmm. some influence as well from, okay. and there's a there's a journalist in there called Joel Bremer, 
Right. So Bonner, Bra Bremen, and Bonn both being German cities. I wonder if that is kind of the same character, or if, he, or if he's yeah. Influenced. I've got to be he's honest also as well. Spoilers. I, he's yeah. the bad guy, so uh, no. that well, might fit my house. I mean, spoilers. Or I haven't seen this. I haven't read it. But anyway, we'll find out. But um, also, um, something quite funny is I read the notes the other day, and and I, I am dyslexic. But and this isn't an excuse. I also have a one track mind. I read that, and when he's playing a character called Hector Boner, I was like, is that, <laughs> <laughs> is, what's this about? <laughs> hey, I'm Hector Boner. Brown chicken. Wow, wow. And I'm like, the boss has changed. <laughs> Definitely the bad guy, Hector yeah, yeah. Boner. Um, yeah. So, yeah, also spoilers. There will be spoilers. Please don't yeah, yeah, yeah. send us hate mail. We've done enough spoiler alerts now that if you haven't yeah. stopped this and you're like, oh, there's going to be the spoilers later on, then really, it's not our fault anymore. It's your fault because we've told you enough. <laughs> exactly. As far as I'm concerned. You, you're hopefully grown up. If you mm -hmm. listen to this, so you should, you know, it's, yeah. it's your responsibility. Mm -hmm. um, one thing I want to mention before we get into the episode here, yeah. um, our wonderful uh, intro song mm -hmm. um, is a song called Remington Magnum Express by the Bourbon Boys, mm -hmm. who are a band I've come to love recently. Um, their lead singer, lead singer is called Holkoff. Mm. Um, he also does a metal um, okay. Under under the name of Holkov. Mm -hmm. um, he has an album out called Quen, which is great as well. Okay. Um, yeah, and I just I I asked them if we can if we can use this as an intro song, and they said yes. So I'm mm -hmm. I, I'm I'm really happy about that. I love that song. Yeah, it's great. I loved it. You sent it to me, and I was like, "Yep, yeah, let's use that." Um, so that was great. Also very outlaw. <laughs> yeah, and it's got awesome guitar in it, and and it's really catchy as well. And I like it. Um, you, you wouldn't you wouldn't think he's from Sweden, right? Oh shit! I he didn't even know that. that. Now I assumed yeah. he was from like Alabama or somewhere. <laughs> he does that accent bloody well, doesn't uh, he? Yeah, yeah. yeah. His his name's Per Hulkov. Oh okay. Um, he, he's from um, he's a he's from where Sabaton is from, like uh, in, okay. in, yeah, in yeah, rural Sweden. Um, he's like sense. a friend of the Sabaton lead singer. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah. So I just want to mention that. Cool. Um, so shall we get into the episode then? Let's do this. So mm -hmm. we're discussing first episode of season one. Mm. Um, it is called Chapter One. <laughs> they dropped so th in the first season all this like Chapter One through Ten. They yeah. they dropped that in season two. Mm -hmm. um, Tis the season mm. because it's a holiday episode. Um, it's it's Christmas. Yeah, much like every great Christmas film, like Die Hard, for example. <laughs> it's always better <laughs> at Christmas, man. <laughs> also very very. You know, you never get like from the LA stuff. You never get the Christmas mm. style. It's like it's like Christmas in Australia, right? It's I like hot. Yeah, actually, now that now that I thought of that, it is Christmas and it's LA, and about the only thing they don't do is go to Nakatomi Plaza, and he doesn't say yippee ki yay, motherfucker, but he does shoot some people. So I don't know. Um, not in the first, in the first episode. He does maybe shoot maybe someone like, in the first episode. No, no, I, I was going to say uh, he's not going to Nakatomi Plaza. Uh, that no, might you're happen right, later. You're right. Yeah, we we don't know. I've just watched uh. Die Hard recently, so. <laughs> I've got that fresh in my mind. So I said to someone today, I don't even know what the context was, but I just went, now I have a machine gun. Ho, ho, ho. And they looked at me like, what? <laughs> I was like, you've got to watch Die Hard again. <laughs> I guess it's fucking, it's a great film. <laughs> in September, <laughs> Dan just goes around. Oh, oh, yeah, oh, yeah. Oh. It's always Christmas in my house. Um, all right, then. So, uh, yeah, so, so I, I, I have I have 10 pages of notes here. So really? I'm prepared. Shit, okay. This is not like Linux Outlaws, right? Mm -hmm. So I'm actually using the old Linux Outlaws red book. Cool. Um, to write down these notes. So that's a blast from the past. Yeah. Anyway, so I, I wrote down here. The the first thing is, mm -hmm. uh, I wrote, first thing I wrote down is, Welliver's voice is great. Mm. He owns from the very first line. He does. I just love the way he talks. Yeah. Interestingly, um, I mean, we've mentioned already Sons of Anarchy quite a lot. Um, I only really knew him from that. And he plays an Irish character in that. And yes. I thought, like, when I first watched Bosch, I was like, oh, he does a really good American accent. But it turns out that he was doing a really good <laughs> Irish accent, and I yes, didn't know. Yes, that's what I thought. I always thought he was Irish. <laughs> yeah, he no played he uh, Gale, the Galen, the, the gun-running dude, uh, the uh, IRA, yeah, yeah, IRA yeah. gun-runner dude. Yeah, very different character. He's a great actor, though. I like him. He's a really good choice for the role, I think. Uh, didn't he play Jimmy O? Uh, oh, I can't remember. I thought Isn't his character was Jimmy called o? Galen. Well, we're getting onto a different subject now, but yeah, anyway, I, I'm so sure his character was called Galen. Or Jimmy, Jimmy of Jimmy oh, maybe of Phelan. Jim, oh, you're right. So he was with yeah. Galen, who was the the Irish guy. Yeah. It doesn't matter anyway. All Sorry. you need to know is he played an Irish gun runner, gun dealer right, exactly. in in uh, Sons of Anarchy, and I thought he was Irish because of that. But he's not. He does that great. So, um, so we start. Mm. So this whole thing starts 
with a thing that mm. happens two years before the actual mm. plot yeah. uh, of, of the episode. So, so um, they're watching a guy's house. Um, so they're like on on the on That's the prowl, right, yeah. um, and they're watching a guy guy's house, and then they follow him. And yeah. this guy's ov- I wrote that this guy's obviously creepy. He's up to something. <laughs> so he leaves his house by yeah, car, right? He does. Yeah. Drops it off mm. like downtown, then mm-hmm. walks to the metro and takes the metro. Mm-hmm. Um, also, um, he walks right past Angel's flight. Yeah, um, true. Which is significant later. Yeah, which is in season four, mm-hmm. uh, will become very significant. Um, mm-hmm. And yeah, I just I wrote down that guy Defo looks creepy. He so, does, yeah, yeah. Go on. No, no, just yeah. And well, then they basically. Say, so my my notes on this, which you kind of already know, was I I, I take very different notes than Fab. Um, I was writing things because so I that's the kind of the way I watch things. As things go past, I go, oh, there's a red car. That was really cool, and and I like write that down. So I wrote down. Um, let me have a look. Um, how shit is Bosch at following people? Question mark. Or how dumb are they? Question mark. Because in that scene, uh, the whole bit from the start, he drives his right. car right behind the guy he's following. Which is, I'm not a detective or anything, but I know if you're going to follow someone, you stay at least one car between you and the person you're following. Right. You also don't park in their eye line, right across the road, looking out the window at them. Where obviously, because it's a TV show, they've shot it in such a way that we have to see that Bosch is behind the guy. But actually, if the guy just looks over his shoulder, Bosch is right there. There. And also, then, then Bosch puts a cap on, just a baseball cap, and apparently that makes him invisible. And well, he wa- I, I wrote down here, Bosch, master of disguises. Yeah, and then the cap. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, and then and then about a second, about ten seconds later, he bumps into some dudes who give him a bit of attitude, and then as he walks past them, he takes the cap off and throws it in a bin. And I'm like, yeah, so you've the- lost that now as well. And the guy's like, oh, a cap. Yeah, and the guy <laughs> goes like, and takes the cap out of the bin. But isn't yeah. isn't Edgar driving? Yeah, well, maybe. Um, yeah, you're right. Isn't, maybe, you're because right. Yeah, Bosch yeah. gets out, right? Yeah, you're right. And then Edgar moves the car. But anyway, it, it's not good following technique in, with all my knowledge of how to follow people. It's not, doesn't seem like, but it, in TV shows, they have to kind of show you, the viewer, that the person's following them. And like, so you can see the perpetrator and the person in the same shot. I right. appreciate yeah, that. Yeah. But really, that's not very realistic. I mean, I'd By like, the way. Mm. So as soon as we start this podcast, my neighbors start drilling in the walls. Is it a Bosch drill? I better hope it's a fucking Bosch drill. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Fuck. If it's a Black and Decker, I'm come over there. It's hammer time, baby. Bastard. Hammer action time. Um, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So so they follow this guy, and so so Bosch wears a jacket, right? Mm-hmm. And then he, um, so so he follows the guy wearing mm. that jacket. Then he meets Edgar at the ca- back at the car. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Hands him the jacket, gets a cap, mm-hmm. but he's wearing an, another jacket. So was he w- wearing that jacket under the first jacket? Well, as you pointed out, Bosch is a master of disguise. He has multiple jackets, and maybe he has <laughs> reversible, like reversible jackets, because <laughs> yeah. he's such a master of disguise. <laughs> so they so they follow this guy who who left apparently left his house right. He's going somewhere, mm. and then he's going to some apartment complex, I think. Mm-hmm. Um, so there's a dark alley. Right, yeah, this guy goes yeah, in the dark yeah. alley. Bosch follows him in, mm-hmm. and then immediately sees the dark alley. Goes around the corner. Before he goes around the corner, immediately pulls out the 1911. That's right. So, yeah. so Bosch has a very distinctive gun. So I'm, I'm. Isn't it a Glock? I thought it was a Glock. No, it's a it's a Colt 1911. The Glocks. Ah, yeah. Any everybody else uses Glocks. On I was going to say because I, I did look this up, and I know that the Glock 17, I think it is, is standard issue. That is. That's the standard issue of yeah. the LIPD, but Bosch uses his own gun, mm. gun a uh, Colt 1911. So mm. we p- we'll get into this. Mm-hmm. Uh, people might remember from Linux Outlaws, I was very uh, pro gun laws, mm. like you know, a strict gun uh, control, gun control, gun yeah. control, dude. Mm. Um, but since then, I've well, I'm still very much for gun control, but I've I've learned a lot about guns. <laughs> but you're now sat uh, in an armory. <laughs> Well, so I've been a member of a it. shooting club for yeah, a while. Yeah, I used to do that years ago. Yeah, and yeah. So I've actually shot, shot a Glock 17 mm-hmm. uh, in the meantime. But like the 1911 is very significant. Um, he doesn't have that gun in the books. Okay. Um, but it's a, it's a very distinctive gun, um, especially because... Um, so it's... Uh, so if you, if you look at it, right? It's, mm. a, it's a... I mean, it's called the Colt called the Colt 1911 yeah, so it's from like 1911 mm-hmm. right and it's uh, it's it's a single action mm-hmm. so so you carry it with the hammer cocked 
Oh yeah, I got you. And yeah. this is why a lot of people don't like it, especially in the police. It doesn't have a good, uh, good rap, I think, because of that. Because you, co I think it's called cocked and locked. Yeah. The way you carry that, and pe so you basically have a round in the chamber, <laughs> and you can and, blow your balls and, off by mistake. As you and it's cocked. Put, fire well, actually, it like pulling out your pants. <laughs> if you if you read about this, apparently it's a very safe oh, okay. gun. Right. It okay. just doesn't look safe because you know you have a round in the chamber and you're carrying it cocked and you have mm. a hammer that people are, people are just afraid that if you drop it it'll lo knock the hammer loose it'll go off yeah. which, which apparently from the inside construction of this gun is nearly impossible but if you compare it with something like a glock where you don't have a hammer right you don't have an external hammer yeah, yeah. um and you have like trigger safeties and shit like that it seems it's that yeah. seems a lot more safe i think so it's a bit of a it's a bit of a like rogue yeah, like you know, it's a, it's a. I think it's significant that he has that gun. Well, um, it's a military service gun as well. So that a, too, yeah. A big part of the character, which they very quickly tell you about, is the fact that he's done a lot of military service and so. Right. On. So I think we'll the point is that. that it's his military gun or whatever. I don't know. And you will see. Um, so he actually, um, Titus, Titus Welliver has talked. Of, oh, Titus, mm. also name by the way, <laughs> uh, has talked about this um, in interviews and on social media and stuff. You see that. Um, so when they when he moves like as the character of Bosch, mm. he and he moves in situations like this when he has his gun out, he doesn't move like a policeman. He he moves like a like a he he was an ex Green Beret, so special forces. So mm. he kind of moves moves like that, you know. Yeah, um, and, yeah, uh, he does. You're right. Um, I, but that scene, so the scene that we're talking about, he does shoot the guy during that at the end right. of that scene. And then the thing that I, I I've made this a note of this another one of my strange notes is that um the guy apparently only speaks Spanish because he's shouting at the guy and the guy's shouting back in Spanish. So then he starts to talk a little bit of Spanish, but then what it sounds like he's shouting repeatedly is gazpacho, which... <laughs> Which he keeps going, gazpacho, right? gazpacho, and then he shoots him. And I'm like, is he basically going soup, 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 bang? Um, or is gazpacho an Italian soup? I didn't is, look is that he, up. No, no, that's a Spanish soup. It's a cold soup. It's a cold soup. Oh, it's a cold yeah. soup. You, you Fans of Red Dwarf will know summer. about gazpacho soup. From oh, I love gazpacho. Rimmer, it's amazing. Rimmer's uh, nightmares about gazpacho soup. So, um, yeah, so he shoots him twice. So my question is that mm. I've underlined three times here. Was there a gun? Because well, you the know, guy, do you? you don't get to see. Uh, that, well, the guy. So mm. he, you see him like in profile, right? He's yeah. lights behind him. You just it's see dark like a black as well profile. And it's raining and he gets down yeah. on his knees because Bosch apparently tells him, "I don't speak Spanish." In Spanish, uh, get, on get on your knees for or, soup. Or, or, he, or he orders the <laughs> soup. Yeah. I don't know. Did um, you order the soup? <laughs> so <laughs> the guy reaches his right hand behind his back, mm. right? Mm -hmm. And you hear, so I've watched this about 10 times, right? Yeah. Which is a pain in the ass on Amazon's fucking interface. Yeah, it's not great. It's, it's a pain in the ass compared to Netflix. Anyway, so I'm, 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 I'm like scrubbing back in. You hear like a click. Mm. You know, like the click on TV. Mm -hmm. It always makes a click when you grab a gun. Mm -hmm. It doesn't make any sense because guns don't make a sound when you grab them. Yeah, but it's also anyway. the same. They do, that with, they do that with everything. In films, when you punch someone, it goes. It makes a big noise, and that's not real either. And also, when they pull a sword out, even if they're not pulling it out <laughs> yeah, of the sheath, it goes... <laughs> And you're like, yeah. you just pick that up off the floor. It or gone, a knife. Shh. Or yeah, exactly. like a really small knife. And it just goes, yeah. Hey, yeah. you pulled that out of a leather sheath. But nope. in terms of pop culture references, I did write down during that scene, who shot first, Bosch or the other dude? <laughs> <laughs> or well, clearly Bosch. <laughs> but, clearly you know. Bosch. Yeah, yeah. But the question that will come back to haunt him is, had this guy a gun, right? And he shoots him twice. Uh, 1911 uses 45 ACP. Yeah. And in the books is established that Bosch uses always uses like some some mad fucking mm. uh like hollow point ammo. Yeah, hollow like points. Yeah, yeah. Dum dums. Man, well, not like in the in the book. See, in the first book, he goes. Well, they on call them dum dums, don't they? It's because they they well, ricochet around inside the inside the skull or wherever. Once they get in, they ricochet inside. The well, that's fragment. a that's a that's a twenty two usually. Oh, uh, okay. Like a like a well, the point of a hollow point is that it it'll just it'll expand, right? So it'll it'll hit yeah, yeah, body I mean, mass yeah. and then expand. So it'll it'll create a very big hole. Yeah, yeah, yeah um, exactly. Yeah. So, um, but there's like special like high, high X or something. They, they, it's like in the books they go on about what special ammunition he uses. So they're basically like to mm -hmm. to have a higher stopping power. Does he make his anyway. own bullets like a real killer? You know, people sit there and uh, uh, like no. A, a, oh, okay. Because like you see Although, guys in films, don't you, or girls in dude, films. Dude, I know a guy. I know yeah. a guy from the gun club who uh, makes bullets. They, they all make their own ammunition because it's cheaper. Yeah. Because yeah. you saved like three. 
<laughs> three cents a bullet. So yeah, that's you why laugh because it, it's cheaper, not because it's better. Seriously, on the weekend, if you do like competition shooting, right, mm -hmm. you go through hundreds and hundreds of rounds. Yeah. So true. you actually save a lot of money because you recycle the 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 um. You know, the, 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 cases, the, no, the casings. Yeah, you recycle the cases, the casings yeah. by your own powder. Yeah, that's right. By the bullets, mm -hmm. and then you know. If anyway. this if this kind of talk doesn't get us on some kind of list, if someone's analysing, <laughs> if will. Google or whoever yeah. else or the NSA are analysing the, the text of this, it's just flagged up like make your own bullets and, and all that. I'm I'm okay. I have an LAPD detective badge. If they yeah bashed true. down my door, I'm just gonna go. <laughs> One thing I did know is uh, is he well, it's a 45 that he uses. But yep. um, it did make me think there's a lot of parallels with Dirty Harry and the character because obviously um, the chief Most comes in and says, what, well, Bosch, another world. one. And then there's whole points where he's talking to the chief and the, he, he's like disrespectful and the other guy almost says to him, damn it, Harry. That's And his name's Harry as well, or Hieronymus yep. Bosch, which Hieronymus again is another Bosch. reference because Hieronymus Bosch is the artist, who famous artist. I wondered the if painter. that was, yeah, that's yeah, painter. Yeah, that must be significant. But anyway, so there's a point where he almost basically almost says to him, damn it, Harry, that's whoever, you know. And I was like, Bloody hell, this is like Dirty Harry. Because, like, obviously I was thinking, you know, 44 Magnum, most powerful yeah, handgun in the world. At yeah, the time so he says was. to him, another one? What mm. the fuck happened? That's so this it, yeah. is yeah. Deputy yeah. Chief Irwin Irving. Yeah, Irv, as they call him. Irv, <laughs> yeah. um, who in the books is like a white dude mm -hmm. who always flexes his... So his thing is he... He always flexes his muscles, like his jaw muscles. <laughs> what, like, uh, and he, like Hulk Hogan, like we talked about before. Yeah, he, he, the he like, <laughs> he's like, look at the 22 He goes pythons. like his teeth. He rubs oh, like his teeth across each other. Okay. And like in the book, like in, in the book, um, mm -hmm. Connolly goes on about how this, like he needs like new implants, like every 18 months. Because he rubs his teeth. Because he just flexes his muscles all the time. Right, right. Um, okay. But if you see the guy that cast it, mm -hmm. um, as Irving, uh, it's a really good car. Like it's a, so, it's, 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 he's yeah, a really. That, he looks like he's got like. Yeah, he's hardcore. He looks. Jaw. He looks hardcore. But that um, yeah, that hardcore actor, jaw. whose name I should look up, but I have not going to look up right now. Um, that I'm actor going, that. going back to the wire suit so just just for a minute. Um, he's the chief, and he's one of the chiefs in the wire as well. So I think they picked up. There's a lot of actors in this who are also in the wire. So because the wire was so successful, those actors have ended up in everything. Um, and uh, he's a big character in The Wire, and he plays a similar um, character as well. Lance Reddick. Lance Reddick, yeah. He's in loads of things. He's also in John Wick. So, so tall, black dude. Yeah. If, shaved head. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. He, if you've seen he John Wick, fits. he's the concierge at the hotel who, like, you know, when John Wick comes in and he's like, would you like room service and all that shit, when he's basically code for would you like any more weapons and, you know, all this stuff. Um, he's the same. He's the character. He's the actor who plays that character as right. well. By the way, we wanted to be, this be one hour, and it's thirty minutes. And we're yeah, not well, I didn't think we were going to go scene music. by scene through the episode. If I'm honest, let's uh, speed <laughs> well, it up a bit then. So, okay, what um, happens I next? Wanna, Bosch has shot someone. Is what I took. Bosch from has that. shot someone. I want to talk about the intro though. Yeah, um, even yeah, though if yeah. it's, we don't have to do that every show, obviously. But I love that intro sequence. Yeah, it's it's yeah. art. It is really good. Um, the whole show lovely, is shot really really well. Lovely music. So it's a it's a jazz song, but it's modernized. It's no, got it's got oof. like a drum and bass beat to it as well, almost. Yeah, like it's um yeah. So B Bosch's thing, mm -hmm. um, this is from the books. Uh, is he's massively into jazz. So you've answered that um, question because one of my questions on my little list of notes was: Is Harry this into jazz in the books? Yes, a okay. lot. Cool. Um, so actually, I've gotten into jazz because of this show. Yeah, <laughs> I've never listened to jazz before. Wow. Um, but there's like on Spotify, somebody put together like a Harry Bosch mm. uh, playlist or something. Playlist with all the songs, and it's great. So the intro mm. song is a song called Can't Let Go yeah, that's by right. a band called Caught a Ghost. Oh, okay. Um, and there's also, um, who's the. Um, mm. There's a jazz musician who later has a cameo, like a young. Uh, Oh, uh, Grace Kelly. Oh, she's actually he, he says he, he's gonna see Grace Kelly and she's like in the bar and she sings the song. No, um, she okay. has a song called "Blues for Harry Bosch." I think that's the song. Right. Anyway, okay. so great intro, jazz. Yes, definitely. Um, yeah. Courtroom scene. Mm. Um, so this starts now two years later. Mm -hmm. Bosch is being trialed. So um, to, mm. to to get uh, to, to in this uh, season, they mix together kind of like three Bosch novels. Okay. So the main plot is apparently from a uh, novel called Echo Park, which I haven't read. Okay. 
There's a sideline plot from a novel called City of Bones, which I haven't read either. <laughs> this is doing well, isn't it? Right, yeah. Go but on. the main, but this plot line with the court case is from a book called The Concrete Blonde, which okay. I have read. Yeah. And so just a little background. So in the book, yeah, right, Bosch also shoots a guy. He is on a serial killer investigation, like here. Um, and he goes into an apartment, like he... he um, so there's a guy who kills prostitutes, right? And there's this prostitute who comes to the station and she's like, oh, so there's this guy who puts, he's called the doll maker. He puts like uh, okay. yeah. lipstick and stuff on 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 prostitutes and strangles them. And then he keeps the the um, the li- lipstick and all the makeup stuff. Yeah. And so there was a prostitute who goes, goes home with a guy, goes into his bathroom to freshen up, sees like lipstick bottles from like, 20 different Uh-oh. women and then runs away <laughs> runs to the station meets bosch bosch drives her back to the apartment and for some reason and doesn't call for backup oh, no. oh. pretty much like here then shoots the guy in the apartment yeah, but yeah. he shoots him very differently so he comes in the apartment mm. right sees a guy who's naked stark naked mm. and says you know hands up don't move and the guy the guy goes and lunges under a pillow so oh. bosch shoots him through right. the pillow. No, no he, sh- he just shoots him. Oh, right, because okay. he thinks that there's a gun under the pillow. Oh, okay. Yeah. Turns out, sense. under the pillow, there was a toupee. Oh, Like wow. a hairpiece. All oh, right. So the guy wanted to put his hairpiece on. <laughs> um, it well, later turns... Don't shoot me without my hair on. <laughs> pretty much, yeah. <laughs> so it later turns out that, that, that he was the killer. Um, okay. But, um, yeah, yeah. So, th- so in the book, there isn't a question if there was a gun. Um, no. Although in the book, just like here, mm. the LAPD clears Bosch, uh, calling it a, a, a good shoot. Yeah, that's uh, what they call it. Yeah, so sorry, uh, yeah, yeah. you know, uh, right, righteous, uh, righteous kill shooting or whatever. Righteous and shooting. Yeah, the case he's having against uh, M- Honey Money in air quotes Chandler. Okay, um, it's like this defense lawyer. He, she's in this as well. Um, is a civil suit. So this is also this is the same thing, a uh, mm-hmm. civil suit. Mm-hmm. Um, so we, we're now in the courtroom and, you know, they're basically trying trying bus, bush for this. Once again, this whole thing feels a lot like Michael Connolly watched a lot of Dirty Harry films because then you've got, of course, the scene where the guy's like the mayor or whoever's like, we don't want a repeat of that incident in the Fillmore District last, last year. And then the, I think he goes... Um, <laughs> Uh, Clint Eastwood goes well when I see a guy running through the streets naked chasing a prostitute with a machete in his hand I assume he's not collecting for the Red Cross <laughs> shoots the guy, which is very much kind of bosh when I see a guy naked in a room with a prostitute and you know he's yeah. whatever now that you say that with the whole Harry thing that might, might yeah be of course it is yeah um, oh, well who doesn't love Dirty Harry you know Dirty Harry so too. um what I like about this, so so um, he gives this is very iconic. So we get a we get all all mm. the backstory here, right? Mm-hmm. This is a classic pilot episode setup. You get all the characters. Yeah. You know, it's like state your record. You know, state your full name and rank for the record. And he goes, Hieronymus mm. Bosch, Detective Three, LAPD Hollywood Division. Mm-hmm. Um, and then the iconic line: How many people have you killed? And he says, I don't know. Yeah. And then everybody's like. <gasps> Oh my god! And then we figure out he is a so he um he was in the first Vietnam war. war. No, no, and in then, this one it's the Gulf War, isn't it? Uh, the Gulf War. Sorry, he was yeah, in the first Gulf War. Because it's changed time and they've shifted. And it, then yeah. after nine eleven, he, he went re-upped back, yeah. and went to Afghanistan. So he was spe- Army Special Forces mm-hmm. Green Beret. So in the original book, so the first book is from ninety two. So yeah. Bosch is a bit different there. He's he's got a he's got a mustache and a pager. Um, he's he's got he's got a pager. He's got <laughs> yeah. curly long hair. And wow. we might talk in in yeah. We might it talk sounds more in, like in, Riggs from Lethal Weapon. <laughs> that description. Well, it's like it's it's he's basically from the eighties, right? right? In the books, yeah. it's the nineties, but he's like still living yeah, in the seventies yeah. and the eighties. And uh, <laughs> we um, we might talk later, how, uh, you know, in this in this in this show about like mm-hmm. in, in further episodes uh, on the differences. But the main difference is. Bosch back then he was in Vietnam mm-hmm. and he was a tunnel rat, so he was one of the guys who had to go into go the tunnels. In the, yeah, yeah, that's uh, a bad And job. this is very significant in the first book because there is a he he has the the, the first the first novel deals with uh, not only murder but also like a, a bank caper and guys who dig a tunnel under a bank. Oh, I get you. Yeah. And so he has to go into the tunnels and then get shot and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Um, but here they later on they keep going on about how like he had to go into these tunnels in Afghanistan. Mm-hmm. Um, but so that's that's the military backstory there. Yeah. And so we figure out he killed a lot of people. 
uh, in Iraq and then killed five people mm -hmm. in the line of duty for the LAPD. Yeah, and doesn't he say something like they were all cleared or something, or, or someone says they yeah, were all... They were all yeah. So he had a lot of run-ins with FID, which yeah. is the Force Investigation Division. I think uh, it's called AID in the books. It was called AID back then in the 90s, um, okay. the Internal Affairs, and the IAD, Internal Affairs Division. Um, mm -hmm. But, yeah, so we see a guy. Um, so we meet Irvin again, right? Mm -hmm. He's the deputy chief. Um, he is actually... Or well, he was at some point head of of FID. Yeah. Um, and there's Captain Pounce, which Boss hates. That's his captain, Harvey Pounce. He hates him. Um, mm -hmm. And there's another guy that's with him um, in in the series. He is an Asian Asian guy, and he has talks to him. He's called Chastain. Right. So Chastain is an FID guy. Um, that's why you know Bosch hates him, and and Pounce hates Bosch because. Bosch keeps breaking the rules and yeah. he wants to get rid of him. And obviously dangerous. FID, uh, they're just like the part of the cops who want to nail the other cops. Yeah. Um, very significant backstories in the book. So he's always going back and forth with, with internal affairs. Yeah. Um, actually, yeah, in the in the books, although I don't think this will happen, but in in the books, uh, spoilers. Is later, spoilers is later killed. Right, okay. Um, so expect yes. that in season five. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. I don't know. Um, when ha when is Harry, also... what's his name? Something Boner, Hector Boner. <laughs> 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 yes. Well, they changed, like, when you watch this and you've read the books, you figure out that uh, a lot of the characters are the same, but they change stuff around. Yeah. And there's there's a lots of lots of mentions for people who've read the books. Mm -hmm. um, lots of extra stuff they will then. Cool. But okay, so apparently we figure out that Pounds gave Chandler, like, mm -hmm. dirt on Bosch. Yes, um, yeah, yeah. I guess. And then we uh, go into the LAPD Hollywood division after mm. the court case. So this is where, where Bosch works. It mm. is also, this is filmed in the actual LAPD Hollywood division. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's, it's if you read the books, it's very iconic because he goes through the back entrance he always goes into. So mm -hmm. in the books, he goes on about this entrance a lot, and about this how he goes over the parking lot and then there's mm. the drunk tank. Mm -hmm. um, and he goes past the drunk thing. And then we see drunk Santa. Yes. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, who apparently uh, in a in a scene they filmed, I mean, they they must have changed the pilot around quite a bit. Um, mm. This was Connolly. Yeah, so they filmed He was drunk Connolly. Santa, yeah, okay. Yeah. Interesting. And now in this, it's uh, Henrik Bastin, who is one of the executive producers. I think he's, he's Henrik, Henrik Bastard there, I was going to say. <laughs> he's, he's pretty much the main showrunner. With okay. Titus Welliver and yeah. you know Connolly, those three mm. made this version of Bosch. So that's but interesting. I'm, I'm going yeah. on all the time. What have what, what have you? What, what are you? No, 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 no. That's cool. I, I I didn't know all the background stuff, which is cool. Um, yeah, I did know that um that uh Titus Welliver because when I looked at it, I was like, oh, that's really good casting, and then I found out actually he was kind of part of he was instrumental in kind of getting this together. So I don't know how much he was cast so much as he was like, I'm working on this project called Bosch and obviously I'm going to be Bosch. And uh, and that, um, I don't know. Well, I, I've read an interview where they said, like uh, Connolly said, um, he was like, they they, cast, they 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 interviewed a lot of people for the role and he saw Titus Valiver and he was like, I want that guy. Yeah. And then um, it wasn't clear if Valiver could take it because he had a lot of movie roles and shit. Yeah, he's but in he a was, lot of films. It's like a little part in lots of films. Often. Yeah, but then Connolly was really happy when he said, "I really want to do that." And I think from season two onwards, he he started to be instrumental and give more input. And uh, okay, yeah, yeah, you know, makes sense. Yeah, yeah, come part of it. Yeah, I don't think he's executive producer in the first season. I can't remember now. I didn't look that up. Yeah, I do know. Well, the, obviously, the most recent one I watched was the, the last season, season four, and he's definitely very much. Yeah, yeah, mentioned a Later lot in that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so then we meet Crate and Barrel. Oh, I love those guys. <laughs> who are two detectives at the homicide table uh, at, at Hollywood Division. And they're called, what they're called? Oh, God. I wrote uh, Johnson and Moore, really. But like one's a tall guy and the other one's fat. So That's right. Crate and Barrel. Also, a, cr a barrel always has, <laughs> you, have to, you have to watch his, he has the best tie pin ever. Yeah. Uh, so he has like these handcuffs. 
<laughs> it's handcuffed type in. Which one? Uh, they don't mention this in this episode, so maybe we should save it for for future. But one of them insists on like grinding his own coffee and bringing his own coffee. Is that is that the, one of those? I can't two? remember that. Uh, we will get to that. We'll keep watching okay. for that. I'm sure one yeah. of them. Like, there's a big whole thing they talk about in the break room where like the other guys are joking about that he has to bring his own coffee every day. Or something. Must be grind. great, right? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, um, yeah. Because I think one of them says to the other, like, the, one of them gets a coffee out of the thingy, and then like they starts drinking it, and he goes, "Fucking hell, is this this shit that like Crate brings in?" <laughs> and then they go, "Yeah, he brings his own coffee." And then there's a whole becomes a whole like recurring theme of like the dude brings his own coffee. I can't even remember that. Yeah, well, maybe that's later seasons. So yeah, they become tuned. bigger characters later. They do. Um, we also meet Lieutenant Billets, who is uh, Bosch's immediate yes, yeah. superior. She's awesome. I like her. She's really, cool, yeah. yeah. She, like, smokes with him on the roof and shit. Yeah, and um, she also, yeah, and she's really good. Again, uh, I think it's Amy Amy something, the actress. That's bad. Um, but anyway, she's brilliant as well. Uh, whatever the casting procedure was in that is perfect because she's just really good at that. Um, and yeah, and she well, we're getting ahead of ourselves, but she also goes to his house later on, and they have a quite an interesting discussion there as well, which is quite cool. Amy Aquino. That's it, Amy it's Aquino. I knew it was Amy something. Um, yeah, so she's really good. Also, one uh, before we get uh, too far into the uh, into the plot, although we're into it a bit now, um, I want to ask you because you've read the books. So the character of like J. Edgar is yep. uh, is he is he in the books called J. Edgar? Yes. So Jerry is that Edgar. a J. Edgar Hoover reference? Because at first I'm like, th- J. Edgar Hoover, obviously. It must be, right? And it's his real name. It's not a nickname. It's his real name, yeah. Jerry Edgar, uh, they right. call him Jed uh, in so, the books. So, once again, another link back to The Wire, which seems to be happening a lot, is he is a massive character in The Wire. That actor plays the main right. kind of bad guy in the last two seasons. And he's a huge character in that as well. So, again, they're so, pinch- pinching a lot of actors from The Wire here. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Makes sense. So he is uh, the actor's called Jamie Hector. Yeah, he's good. Uh, awesome sc- scar, by the way. Where, however, you got that. That looks just, like <laughs> might badass. not have been fun getting it, but yeah, it is. A, it is no, a good. No, but scar. like once you once you have it, it's like fucking amazing. Mm-hmm. Um, so he is. Yeah, in the in the books, uh, he's also uh, he's he's a black guy, and he he also runs. He almost retires from from police work because he runs. Uh, like a real estate thing. Yeah. Which in the series, I think his wife does. His wife does it, And, yeah. and then and there's like out. in the 90s, there's the big crash, mm-hmm. the real estate crash, and then he just goes back in. He is mm-hmm. a very, um, he's also Im- always immaculately dressed in the book. So that's okay. the same thing. You will see he's always dressed very well. Um, he's always worried about getting like blood and shit yeah, on his, he on does, his shoes. Yeah. And they make fun of him um, and the others for how he's like always overly dressed. Yeah. Um, but he's, he's, he's like the on the, you know the rules guy yeah and whereas I think, Bosch goes off the reservation quite a bit well that's the classic kind of odd couple partnership of, of like yeah. buddy cop things isn't it really he isn't as much in the books I think uh, he has a bigger role in, in, in the show which I like yeah um, yeah so Maybe where are we up to in the plot then? Let's step on the plot a bit. Um, so so we're we're at Hollywood Division. So basically, uh, what mm-hmm. what transpires is that Bosch has time off because he's on the court case, but he doesn't he doesn't he doesn't like that. He's like, I need the work, and yeah. he just basically ropes a crate and barrel into going Latin, to a Lakers game yeah. so he can take their shitty That's weekend right. yeah, shift, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, which he then does. Um, and Jay Edgar's not very happy <laughs> about it. Jay Edgar's not ha- happy, but then he says, "I'll just pull the pull it alone, you know, pull yeah, it yeah, alone." Pull it, yeah, and yeah. it'll be okay. quiet anyway, or something. He says. So before like we get to that weekend shift, we we see that Bosch is a. We see the house for the first time, and yeah. we see that he's an audiophile. So he's got vinyl. He's got a hipster tube amplifier, yeah, yeah. and he's listening to jazz. Mm-hmm. Um, he's drinking beer and smoking on his porch. So he has a house like that. In the books, like a cantilever house. Oh yeah, um, which actually gets destroyed in an earthquake at some time, and then we rebuilds it. But it's like they talk about this house, so it's the same thing as in the show. Um, mm. There was a case that was actually the Dollmaker case in the books. Yeah, um, that got made into a miniseries on TV, and he, and got he gets paid. money for it. Yeah, he yeah. gets paid for using his name. He's a and consultant some technical expertise. Isn't he as well. I think. Yeah, 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 yeah. And that's he just uses that money and buys a house. Yeah, and he buys that house. Um, so, so that's why when you watch the show, they they did say that in later episodes. You're like, mm. how can he afford that house? It's like in fucking you yeah. know the Hollywood Hills. 
you know, up up off. Uh, it is. Yeah. What's what's that road called? Um, not Rodeo. No, not Rodeo. No, no, um, the famous uh, Mulholland. Mulholland like it's, Drive. It's, yeah, it's yeah. up. It's up there somewhere. Uh, also, a and film. yeah. So yeah. So mm-hmm. that's how he how he got the house. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. I do remember they talk about that, and um, and then um, yeah. So what? Well, you've gone scene by scene. So I was just, I was just thinking of the overall plot of the thing. So what happens next then? Um. So yeah. Let's let. I so yeah. Mm-hmm. We should probably shouldn't go scene by scene. Well, that's alright. We can I, we can arc, that yeah, get the arcs of the story. Well, there's so. that thing where he just goes to the on the on the reservation up there on the dam. Yeah. That's where he, where there's like the suicide. I don't I don't know why that's in the show. Um, no. it's, it's a bit, it's a, so in the, in the book, the mm. book starts with him in his house on a Sunday, he gets woken up and then has to go up mm. to a, a case like this up at the dam, mm-hmm. um, there and, but it's a completely different case. So I don't know why that's in there. I think it's just character building. Yeah. Um, it's, it's not really important. So he gets a call about like, uh, there's some bones, a doctor found some bones that's right, yeah. and Bosch is like, Oh, well, it's going to be some cow or coyote and. Yeah, well, oh. that's there's a p- great line in it where like the guy goes, "They think it's human or something" on the phone, and Bosch goes, "They always think it's human until it's not." <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and then the guy also says it's a humorous. So, so this is Mank, that right? Mank is the watch joke. sergeant. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's he's great. So he's like humorous <laughs> and go check out no, this he goes, humorous. Hum- hum- yeah, humor- humorous and go and check it out. And then like Bosch doesn't even react, and he goes, "Come on, that was good." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, was like just give me the fucking address. <laughs> yeah, and so this is Prime Bosch, right? He's like he's a cynical. Dude, like we see him like with case files in his house with booze. That that's Bosch as a character. Yeah, and he's always smoking. And he keeps telling people right. that he's giving up. He's like, I'm so giving up smoking, the, but he's always smoking. That's from the books as well, where okay. he um he was smoking for the first few books, and then it's like this thing in the middle of the nineties where everybody goes, you're gonna get cancer. And then he actually stops. And then in the book I just finished, he starts smoking at the end again. Oh, so right. I think he's an on and off. Hasn't he got a vape now? <laughs> he gets a vape or whatever they call it now. That book's still like 2000. The, oh, the, okay. like they the didn't book have I'm reading right now is like in 2000. Bosh is on the patches. <laughs> he's on the patches <laughs> yeah. and the gum. <laughs> yeah. So he has this on off relationship. So I think they want to get that across yeah, in the yeah. shows where he always tries to give it up and then he just goes mm-hmm. on again. Um, so um so now that we, we we come to this thing where you think this is going to be his main case right yeah um which might or might not be so basically they find bones uh mm. up, up laurel canyon mm-hmm. and so it turns out this doctor wasn't a chi- chiropractor after all he was actually a doctor yeah and and so they find child's he, bones yeah and then they dig it up and mm. um there's like another doctor, which I just called Professor Bones. Hmm. He's is like that the really forensic weird. guy? Oh no, this is the yeah, other doctor. Yeah. No, it's yeah, he's the forensic doctor. The he's one like in the this, Hawaiian shirt. Yeah, Hawaiian shirt. He's really like, cool. Uh, he looks really cool. I put Roy that in my notes. How he cool is like the he, old hippie forensic dude? Question mark. Yeah. Love his Hawaiian he's shirt. Like, <laughs> he's got like this weird, weird necklace. He looks like he, he should be like, the drummer in like an old seventies band or something. Yeah. Like that. <laughs> it's like tie dyes. He yeah. needs tie dye. He he's looks cool. like fucking Roy Scheider. Like he spent. He's like also got that really awesome voice boat. as well. He's got a very laid yeah. back kind of. Hey, Bosh, yeah. there's some bones, man. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> really? <laughs> so we get this thing. So they're digging up the bones, right? And and you see like the the case file. You see it on a clipboard. It's like City of Bones. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. and that is the book. So that's the reference for where the that case who know is from. Mm-hmm. And you know how he says. In every murder is the tale of a city. Yeah. And then, like, she asks him, uh, who said that? He said, I don't know, somebody. That's him in, in City of Bones, apparently. Ah, okay. So that's a straight line. Also, and you've made me, re- sorry, you've made me remember, I'm jumping right back to the start now, which is bad, but, but <laughs> for the very first scene, the, you know, movie references and other things, I'm convinced this is a reference. They're sat in the car in the very first scene, Edgar and um, and Bosch, and Bosch says it's going to, uh, Edgar says it's going to rain tonight. One of them says it's going to rain tonight, and the other one says Bosch. maybe it'll wash yeah. some of this shit from the streets or something. That's, no, it's both Bosch, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, but that's Taxi Driver. You know, the rain's going to come, one day the rain's going to come down and wipe the scum from the street ah, right that's right. a direct quote from almost from taxi well, driver he says shit like that in the books as well well taxi drivers from 1970 something and the books no no I'm, I'm not yeah i'm not saying it's original in the books who I'm shot just first saying... bosh or taxi driver <laughs> <laughs> no what yeah what i'm no 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 i'm not saying it's not a reference yeah um, no it, it might I'm well t- be because again it's a classic film that everybody what, knows. I, what i'm trying to say is that this is like one of bosh things is like he's mm-hmm. been in la 
uh, all his life. He's mm. never been out of LA, basically. Right. And and LA is his thing. Mm. Like he has the city in his bones. He says at some point, I think. Mm. And I think this is like he even knows when it's going to rain. Yeah. You know, I think this is a step. Uh, this establishing him as well as a character. You know, mm-hmm. um, showing how he he knows so much about LA and he's like he's, he's yeah yeah the ground. yeah that's true so I, I sidetracked you there so um where were we up to yeah well I was gonna say we we'll, we'll, found the bones we'll, go on yeah we're in the middle of it we he also meets um when they're at the doctor you talked about that he meets Brasher which is this rookie yes yeah who's a bit old for a rookie and then later they go for a drink yeah, um, yeah at, so. at Musso and Frank's mm-hmm. um so I'm gonna be in <laughs> in go LA oh, wow. in November yeah. So I ro- really want to go to Musso and Frank's now. <laughs> yeah, so I put down, and this is not a secret, for any, a spoiler for anyone, because basically you can work this out from the first episode. I put down on my note, Lady Officer is clearly into Bosch, and she says to him something like, let's discuss the case over martinis. Mm. And then she says, as, he, as they're talking in the bar, she says to him very seriously, like, he's like, oh, you know, I just do my job and blah, blah, blah. And she very seriously like puts her hand on his, his hand and goes, what you do, it counts. And you're yeah, like, yeah, oh, yeah. yes. <laughs> but also he is, he is down with it because <laughs> he like, is hiding <laughs> he is hiding his torch under a blanket. Right. Um, mm. So when you see him, like he's going to go up. It's going to go dark, right? He's yeah, going to yeah. go up with the dog looking for the bones. That's right. And he hides his torch mm. under a blanket. Mm. So you can ask her for a torch oh, so that he can that give it back to her. He's smooth. <laughs> He's well, like you so later smooth. figure out that she realized that he did that. Ah, okay. Mm. So she says to him, it's like, oh, yeah, yeah I, I noticed you were hiding your other torch <laughs> when he gives it back. Anyway, um, let's not so, talk yeah, too yeah. much about that because that will develop as it goes along. Yes, that will develop. Mm. So, yeah, she's Brasha, she's like a, 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 a... What's this titty boo? Sorry? So they call her, like the other guy calls her, a, he says, titty, we'll see you later, titty boo or something. And then, oh, right, then, then Bosch goes, you're a boot? Oh, so right, yeah. because um, salty yeah. boot, which uh, yeah. is slang for, a, you know, yeah, a yeah. rookie, I think. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Because he says you're a little old for a rookie. That's where he says like you're a bit old for a rookie, I think. Well, she, 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 uh, she, she, she has worked as a lawyer and yeah, yeah. that's law firm for a while. So, mm-hmm. um, yeah. So we have that. So where were we at? So there, the Musso mm. Franks get her backstory. Mm-hmm. Um, God, is it back um, to the courtroom after that? There's a bit where he uh, bosses outside talking to a tramp and he gives him his cigarettes. Oh, yeah, so the tramp mm. um, is also from the books. Oh, right, um, okay. So he's not... Mm. Uh, oh, God, where are we? I've got I've got too many notes. Oh, I just want to look up how that... See, I did up. bullet points, effectively. So I put down, Bosch gives his cigarettes to tramps, a man after my own heart. So the guy is a lawyer. Oh, wow, um, okay. So in the book, you get his backstory. So that guy's a lawyer who just one day just saw too much shit. Mm. Um, uh, and he's called Faraday. Right. Uh, and, and who saw too much shit and then just quits and walks out. Yeah. So in the book, Bosch keeps smoking outside with Chandler, who is the lawyer oh, uh, yeah. who was actually on the other side. Mm. And then he, he, she told him a story about this guy. Mm. So he gives, gives him a cigarette and says, I'm, I'm going to quit. Um, yeah that's right which of course he, he doesn't yeah um, and then the next scene which you learn a lot about Bosch in the next kind of few scenes where like yes. you're back in the courtroom and the, the lawyer the prosecutor whatever she is who's trying to nail him for this shooting money yeah, money Chandler yeah says um, can you tell us what your mother did and he's like, well, my mother was a prostitute. How is this relevant? And she basically just a really low blow. Um, and and everybody goes, oh. Yeah. And then as he comes Jury. out, he says, someone gave her, he says to Edgar, somebody gave her my file, which shows the seed that there's a traitor who's trying to stitch yeah. him up. So this is this is going to be a uh, pound, I think. Oh, don't say um, that now. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, you, um, I don't think you ever figure out. Figure yeah, out right, it's okay. not really that important. Um, okay. What what is really important is the whole thing with Bosch's mother because we're gonna get back to that. Yeah, that is, that yeah. is core to his being and will become very important later on. Mm-hmm. Um, so his mother was a prostitute and she was and murdered. she was murdered. Yeah, they say and that. And he it, went yeah. went into the system court, so he became like an orphan. Yeah, and was like in, and he was in raised in in a home. You find out later as yeah. well. Well, you find out almost in this episode to be honest that he was raised in a home because he and keeps having he flashbacks just, to it. He nearly gets held into contempt by the judge because he, mm. he has an outburst and says, you know, he, he was mm. like, uh, you got a lot of fucking nerve. Damn it, Harry, um, that's the judge. 
you know, it's basically that again, isn't it? <laughs> Pretty um, much, yeah. Honest. So, um, he I is d- pissed. Yeah, the next kind of really big significant bit that I noted about was the they go back to see cool hippie forensics dude again. Yes, but before that, oh, go on. He, they so 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 Edgar says to um, I think we need to go back to the like the corona or whatever. Yeah. And Bosch says, after this bullshit, the morgue will be a breath of fresh air. <laughs> oh, amazing one liners. Yeah. So they so go back to, yeah, they go back to see the hippie forensic dude. And um, he, he then basically tells them all this horrific stuff about history of abuse and skeletal trauma and it's a young boy, but it's hard to tell because it affects the development. It's really bad. And um and forty four separate breaks. Oh, it's it's really horrific. And then yeah. as he's doing that, Bosch is having flashbacks to being in the home. Uh, in the care system, whatever it is, and getting beaten up by people, which you you, yep. you kind of realise is him, and then um, so it says uh, what I put down was it shows a lot about Bosch and how much he cares about this and how he wants to avenge these things in some way. Yeah, he really has to like he he has to go. He says I, I'm going to take a leak, and he has like a panic attack. He needs yeah. baths or whatever. That's right. So so the so the guy says this, you know it's a rotation break, and then then Bosch goes, oh that's like a defensive. Yeah, and Ed- Edgar's like, how the hell does he know that? Mm. And it's like, I think because Bosch had that happen. Yeah, in the past, yeah, and that's basically how the episode ends. Yeah, so that's pretty cool. That's what I had written down last. And at the end, I don't think. Well, actually, we've talked about most of this already. I don't know if we'll make this a regular thing. What I thought we might do at the end is have. I had a thing in my notes called "What did we learn?" So I put down what have we learned from this episode. So basically, very quickly, we've learned that Bosch was in the services. We've learned that he joined the police because he was trying to, I don't know, in some way avenge his mother's death, who was a prostitute. Because the murderer care. was never found. Yeah. Yeah, he was put in a home in a care system because of that. Um, we learned that the lady cop's quite into him. We've learned that. Um, what else have we learned? We've learned that he doesn't like authority. We've learned that the, uh, the coroner authority cool doesn't like dude. him. Uh, <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So I don't know. Yeah, that's what I thought. What did you think you learned from it? Yeah, that's he was in the military. He likes jazz. Um, he likes jazz. True. He, he has likes, an awesome house. He has an awesome house. He doesn't have a private life, pretty much. No. Um, so what he does in his free time is hobby cases. Like, yeah, you know, he, yeah. it's like I can't get let this go to cold case. Like I called mm-hmm. it, it's my case. I'm gonna work this, and then he just sits at home like with a scotch, mm-hmm. listening to jazz, smoking all night, mm-hmm. and like reading case notes. Mm-hmm. Like in the in the books, it's always murder books. So they're called murder books. They're like these That's files right, yeah, with the murder all book. the documents yeah, 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 yeah. in. So he always he keeps reading, keeps the murder reading book, murder books. Yeah. Um, also, uh, interesting. So when he falls and like when he goes up with the dog for the for the bones, right? Yeah. Um, there's a scene where you know when he when he's when it's dark, he turns his flashlight off. Yes. And he sees this coyote. So I put that down. I didn't know if it was a coyote or a wolf, but I wrote down it's, even wolves aren't scared of Bosch because it just stands there right next to him, <laughs> looking at him. This is this is another uh, thing for the novel readers because there's a Bosch novel called The Last Coyote. Ah, okay. Where where he keeps seeing this coyote who lives next to his house mm-hmm. and he has these visions of this coyote. Mm. And I think that's where that that is from. Yeah, it makes and sense. Also, yeah. also he falls and like I don't know bumps his ribs or whatever, and the mm. doctor like bandages him up, and we see like Bosch with his shirt off. That's right. Yeah. And he has like a tattoo on his arm. He has a lot so of tattoos. The, Yes, yeah, so that's Titus Velivar. So I thought that maybe mm. they were for the role, but like he gets more and more tattoos, right. and that's just Titus Velivar. Right. Um, because in the books, Bosch only has one tattoo. It's like from his time in Vietnam. It's like a rat. Mm-hmm. It's like the tunnel rat. The tunnel rat. Yeah. Hmm. But yeah, Titus is gonna is gonna get a lot more tattoos as this yeah. show goes on. And it was probably too expensive to CGI or laser those out. No, <laughs> laser I no no out. I don't. They do that all the time. Like you'd be surprised right, how okay. many I've actually since I got tattoos myself. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm a bit interested in this, and I'm I like a lot of actors mm-hmm. you don't know. Um, have so so mm-hmm. Kiefer Sutherland, right? Mm-hmm. Has have has both forearms tattooed. Does he? Well, yeah. I haven't and that and you never thing. see that in 24. Mm. So um, so Vela was saying like I obviously usually wear long shirts, like sleeves, yeah, just sleeves, no shorts. Yeah. So they since yeah, otherwise they just make up it over it's apparently it's not that hard mm-hmm. um but le- you will see later on bosch has this thing where he just um is he 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 will fold up his sleeves mm. so so it's just a little bit so you can see like the tattoos on his that's forearms. right yeah he does, and there's yeah. actually a scene where he gets like a new lieutenant mm. and she tells him to like pull his pull the sleeves down, down. Yeah, pull the sleeves down. um because mm. apparently, uh, I, I looked this up uh, when you're in the police, especially in the LIPD, um, mm. you can't show your tattoos. Like, if you have any, you need to cover them up. No. Because it's like, uh, you know, 
the, that's the point criminals where, uh, are tattoos, yeah. tattooed, you know. It's, a, it's like a link to anyone who's listened to WrestleMania. Is that a Confederate flag? <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> the big boss man. Yes. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Awesome. Uh, yeah. So that was really cool. I think we've covered most things now. I think we can, you know, yep. people can, you know, hopefully you've enjoyed it. And um, yeah, and we will be back um, with another show, with another episode, uh, when with episode two of uh, the, As the Case Develops. We um, will be. Um, we, yeah. as, as I said, we, we're aiming for two episodes a month. Um, so there's just a mm. few more things to say before Go we on. say yeah, goodbye. Yeah, course, yeah. So I want to say to thanks to Bindmark, who uh, is yes. providing bandwidth for this yeah, show, yeah. Uh, hosting at Bandwidth for Six Gun Productions. Mm. Um, thanks to the Bourbon Boys for mm-hmm. the terrific theme music, yep. which you will hear a That's little great. bit more in a second. Mm-hmm. Um, and we, I didn't... I didn't create an email address because I get enough email as it is. Yeah, we don't need um, an email address, really. If you want to send us feedback, uh, we are at HW Outlaws on Twitter. Mm. But also, we don't want to... This is not like LO. We, we don't want to... Don't no, no, like we're not going to read. That was my of thing yeah, of reading we'll everyone. We'll read it, but not like on the show. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, and we might respond as well, but we'll see. Yeah. To yep. you, I mean, uh, exactly. directly. Um, yeah, and also there's Discord as well, which we talked about before. Um, I need to sort out, but discord.sixgun.org, where you can join the community yeah. as well. So that's uh, it's a bit like IRC, except mm. it, it's like hits, hipster IRC. It's a bit like Slack, you know, <laughs> uh, Slack and an hipster IRC. IRC. Together, right? I'm on old school IRC. I'm actually back on Freenode, and I've been active uh, on there. God. Because I'm just, yeah, I'm too old for that shit. Um, <laughs> too old for the, uh, no, I'll get into Discord, it's fine. The hipster, the hipster shit. Yeah, get the hipsters off yeah. my lawn, basically. Um, yeah, cool. Um, so we'll be back uh, at some point, in, probably in a couple of weeks. Um, I should have said at the start, and I feel bad now that I forgot when we were talking about other podcasts, I recently started another podcast called Tales of oh, the yes. Untested. So if oh, you can't forget. wait two weeks to hear, or three weeks, or whatever it might be, to hear another bit of my voice, that by the time you've heard this probably when it comes out in october there'll hopefully be a few more episodes of tales of the unattested and it's a really interesting kind of funny confessional podcast there's no holds barred not about wrestling and um <laughs> yeah you should go and have a listen to that because it's cool and uh and me and caroline talk about all kinds of interesting things uh you can find it at unattested.podfactory.org if you want to find it there we go yeah check that out it's a great podcast really like it mm-hmm. cool all right and so are we are we going then or should we, do we hang up how does this work <laughs> <laughs> we we are going. I'm I'm gonna call a code seven now. Uh, <laughs> code code seven. <laughs>